back to the Lighting Public Library's Flashback Friday. Today's Flashback Friday finds us at 1422 119th Street. The building was built in 1900. At that time, the address was 528 119th Street. I could not find exactly what was at this location during the 1900s. However, in 1909, Gustav Lender operated the Oriental Drugstore. Gustav Lender was born in approximately 1865 in Leavenworth, Kansas. He worked in the drugstore industry until he was a, since he was a teenager. Lender managed the Oriental Drugstore at 528 119th Street for a few years. Sharing the space with Lender were two prominent attorneys from Whiting, Frank Gavitt and John E. Westfall. Gavitt arrived in Whiting from Saginaw, Michigan in 1892. At that time, Whiting had a population of about 2,000 people. Gavin was born in Washington, Ontario in 1864. He was the son of Albert and Bridget Highland um, Gavin. His father was originally from Osing, New York, and his mother hailed from the state of Maryland. Much of Gavin's youth was spent on his father's farm, which was located in Michigan. Gavin received his early education at the public schools in Saginaw. After graduating from high school, Frank Gavitt enrolled at the Valparaiso University. He then went on to law school at Northwestern. In 1800-1890, Gavitt graduated from Nor Northwestern with his law degree. Two years later, Gavitt relocated to Whiting, Indiana, where he opened up a law firm. Frank M. Gavitt was elected Whiting's first city judge, serving from January 1906 to May 1906. He was also the Wadding Public Library's first board president. John E. Westfall was born in 1877. In 1908, Westfall was elected Whiting City Judge. His term lasted until January 1910. In 1912, Matthew J. Cole opened up a drugstore at this location. He previously ran a drugstore at the Citizens National Bank Building in Hammond. Cole was born in 1889, and he managed the drugstore here in Whiting for a few years. A drugstore was still at this location uh, in 1917. It was now occupied by Lyman B. Ritter. He only was at this location for approximately one year. Lyman was born in Indiana in 1891. Taking over the space in 1919 was Abe Goldsmith. Goldsmith had been a business owner in Whiting since 1904. His new business was a men's furnishing and shoe store. He remained at this location until 1922. In 1922, Sam Ehrenberg and David Kissen opened up a jewelry store at 528 119th Street. They remained in business at this location until 1928. Sam Ehrenberg and David Kissen were born and raised together in Europe. While young men in Germany, they studied the art of watch repair. Ehrenberg arrived in Whiting in 1905. He started out as a salesman, eventually opening up his first jewelry store on Shrog Avenue in 1910. A year later, Kissen immigrated to Whiting, joining the family business. The next business venture at this location was a dry goods business. In 1931, a man named Becker operated the business where you could get quality goods at the lowest prices. There is a gap until 1937 at what was at this location. However, in 1937, the clothing store, the People's Store, opened up shop. The store's address was now changed to 1422 119th Street, and the, the clothing business was here until the 1950s. long period, Riffer's menswear occupied the structure. Then in 1970, Branka Belkovich opened up the International Sewing Shop. The store specialized, specialized in all types of alterations, including custom-fit slipcovers and drapes. The International, International Sewing Shop was in business through the 1970s. There is about a 30-year gap in our records, and I was not able to recall what was located at 1422 119th Street from the 1980s to the 2000s. Um, I could be wrong, but I believe that Milo's 
Sportswear was at this location in the 1980s. However, Guillermo Gamino was on record of purchasing the building in 2004. Some time later, they opened the Second Wind resale shop at this location. Second Wind is still in business today. If anyone uh, that watches this video can shed some light on the mystery, history, mister, missing history, uh, please comment below. Um, I'd like to fill in the gaps that we have. If you enjoyed this or any of the Whiting Public Library's programs, please consider joining the Friends of the Whiting Public Library. You can do so at the library's website or by going to the Friends of the Whiting Public Library's Facebook page. And I do have some photographs of what the building originally looked like. As you can see, you have the white building that's to the left, and then it's the building that's right to the right of the white building. Here's another photograph. by a fire, which was pretty remarkable since the building next door was completely destroyed. And here's a painting of the same building. You can see the different buildings that were there standing before the fire. And this is the woman that ran the International Sewing Company. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed uh, today's Flashback Friday. Um, check back later this month. There will be another uh, edition of the Flashback Friday. See you then.